you know, like I'm uh, uh, a phrase I came up with a number of years ago when I was involved in bodybuilding competitions that uh, whoever wants the muscles has to lift the weights. You know, and, and to a certain extent, that kind of honesty is somewhere near the core of, of tough love. Exactly. What do we do, though, to make sure that love stays central to the interaction? I mean, it, 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 poets haven't answered it in several thousand years, but within this context, what is love and what is not love? Good women, poets haven't answered it in several thousand years. Um, again, we, we've got this one word in English, this poor, lonely little word, love, and so much is loaded into it. You love your spouse, you love your pet, you love ice cream. Um, how can one word carry all of that? And I think that's part of the pro problem with tough love. Um, for instance, a parent who will say, um, as they're picking up the instrument of punishment, belt or paddle or whatever, this is going to hurt you more than it hurts me. Vice um, versa. I think you meant to say it the other way. This is going, this to, going hurt to hurt me more than it hurts you. Yeah, and and it and it doesn't. That's that's a phrase that means nothing. Um, tough love would say, we need to spend some time. I need to give some of my time to this process, and it takes three minutes to paddle you, and maybe half an hour to sit down and have a conversation. Mm. Um, so am I willing to invest time? Yeah. Um, and being present in the moment. Um, All that being said, though, there are occasionally um, people or situations that are so strong-willed, or people in, in particular, I guess, people within situations where there's so much will, there's so much resistance, whatever, that uh, a swat or two to get their attention may be what's needed. Well, but depending the, on the age, of course. Depending on the age and depending on the circumstances and depending on your emotional state. Right, because if you're angry, don't touch, period, the yeah, end. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, a swat on the, on the diaper um, to get a two-year-old's attention um, is nobody's punishment. Yeah. But it can um, get the child's attention, mm -hmm. and and that's what you're doing there. Well, um, and of course, it, it, there's um, it, it's extremely important to consider the amount of force used in each situation. Absolutely. Anything that causes uh, any any mark. lasting damage, any right. mark, anything, anything that will still be felt an hour later, is too much. Right and not about getting their attention. Because at that point, and especially with older children um, and teens, um, you have then shut down any avenue of communication. Mm -hmm. And that is much more important to maintain. Right. Because when you've lost communication, you have severely limited the tools you have available to, to address the situation. Absolutely. Tough love is about communicating options. Um, and if it's, yes, I'm sending you to your room, but that also means that you don't get your iPod. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're in your room, there's no entertainment, there's no TV, there's no iPod, there's no nothing. Um, and we're both going to then reconvene mm -hmm. in half an hour when we've both settled down and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Why did you do it? Uh, and, what were your options? And depending on the circumstances, what do you think is a fair punishment for this? Event? Yes, yes. What is the the opposite of that that balances it appropriately? Yeah. How do you think you should be punished for this? Mm -hmm. You know, now that we've agreed that what you did was absolutely wrong. You know, and it, maybe it's you will be the one to wash all the graffiti off the wall that you sprayed there. Exactly. You know, and you will have a scrub brush and a bucket. You will not have uh, a power washer or mm -hmm. or what have you. You'll be doing this by hand. And it will take a while, and that will give you plenty of time to think about what you did. And then you get the sense of, my action had this result, which created this reaction. Mm -hmm. And there's a direct chain, and it comes back to me. When you begin to understand society as an interconnected web of, of actions and reactions and relationships, all of which need to be maintained in some 
hopefully harmonious and healthy fashion. And ideally, that's what tough love is about. Um, underlining, bringing balance back to bringing society. Bringing balance back to society. Underlining the social contract. And that there is nobody who is immune to or above or outside of the social contract. And, and I would bet that most social contracts, though, are um, rarely specifically defined? Oh, absolutely. Too many of them are um, undefined. Mm. Assumed. Uh, yeah, but uh, tacit. But even at that point, most you know people, there is one. You know there is one, and you pretty well know that that particular action was probably not okay. And, and, and if you don't, if you're not sure what the social contract is, that's another point at which it's time to talk. Well, exactly. You know, and that's what a big, is the expectation of being? That is a big problem with our culture currently, um, and especially in the subsets, um, in the ethnic subsets. Mm -hmm. um, there is not a firm understanding of what the social contract is because we've got clashes of cultures mm -hmm. and cultures have their own social contracts. And if you've never been outside of your culture, you would assume incorrectly that everyone else's so social contract is, is the same. It's like yours, yeah. And so then we have to have the discussion about no, that wasn't okay, and here's why. Not just, it's not okay. Mm -hmm. That's never enough. There needs to be a, here's why. I um, giggled, uh, this is quite a number of years ago, when I was visiting a friend in California, and we went to Golden Gate Park. And he explained that when the Southeast Asian immigrants first started arriving, they had to be educated that the ducks in the park were not for we're hunting. Not, we're not food, yes. <laughs> you do not hunt the ducks in Golden Gate Park. <laughs> you know, they, had a, they were hungry. What were they supposed and to do? there were these ducks, exactly. Of course, they could come to Denver and have some geese because we've got way too many. But yeah, so exactly. What, like the geese too, but what works in your culture of origin and family mm. uh, is not necessarily the larger culture and the larger social contract that you're going to be held responsible to will you nil you. Mm 